No, no, no aiming at me. No, 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 no. Come back no. here, you bastard. No, no. no. Stole my okay, beans. Okay, okay. I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> Hello, YouTube. Uh, my name's Adam. And my name's Alex. And we're doing a uh, Daisy Let's Play, and this is actually episode three. And so, what's our plan for today, Alex? Um. Back when we walked in a circle, there was a little side road going off down here. Uh, I think we should go follow. Alright, and uh, just a little uh, preface for today. Um, Alex is going to be playing in third person, and I'm actually recording in first person. And Thing 2 just died. <laughs> um, so, so you guys will be able to see um, this game played in, in both... In both... Um, perspectives. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. It's on the tip. And, uh, just so you guys know, it's kind of bloody early where I live, so if I sound tired, that's why. Yeah, we both have things to do tonight, so <laughs> we had to, um, record in the morning. Alex, did we do an audio test? Nope, I'm sure it's fine. Okay, excellent. Good to go. Alright, so, what do we want to talk to you about today? Uh, I think what we said last time was some E3 stuff, and, um, we had a question about, um, what we thought of the world map. So, which one do you want to talk about first, Adam? Um, I want to talk about how I can never turn this menu off. Call support, backspace, there we go. Um, let's talk about E3, because I'm really excited for uh, Star Wars 1313. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be an actually good Star Wars game. Um, did you ever play Star Wars Bounty Hunter on the GameCube? Uh, played it on PS2, had a hell of a fun time running around with yeah. people on fire. <laughs> I think that was the, what? That was the only Star Wars game I've ever played besides, um, the original Star Wars Galaxies, and maybe, like, the first 20 levels of the MO, but those, those are basically it. I mean, every other Star Wars game I've played is just total crap. Um, there's also the, uh, X-Wing and TIE Fighter games. Those were good. Really? I never played any of those. They, right. they were pretty solid. Uh, I'm talking the um, PC games. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, TIE Fighter is really, really good. Alright. Uh, what other games are you looking forward to? From E3, um, Watch Dogs. Uh, well, you know, hacking is kind of silly in its application there. It does serve a very as a very nice manipulation mechanic. Uh, I lost you, Alex. Oh, never mind, there you are. I'm really looking forward to uh, what it has to offer. Anything else you're looking forward to from E3? Um, I I don't know. I really um didn't get to see all the trailers that I wanted to, um, because I was too busy programming for the game that we were <laughs> that we're making. Um, we'll, but, we'll uh, tell you guys about it later a bit once we have it a a uh, bit more polished and a bit further into development. Right. I looked at the um, the Dead Space 2, of course, and, you know, three. however much... Er, yeah, 3, I'm sorry. Um, you know, it, I loved the first one. The second one wasn't as good, but I just like the... I like the co-op aspect of it. I feel like, you know, I like this horror games, even though Dead Space 2 wasn't really a horror game. Um, I kind of like the, the horror game feel. Alex, I gotta turn my game volume down. I'll be right back. Okay. It just got really loud for some reason. Oh, man. It was like blasting my ears.
Okay. All right, I'm back. Okay, we are <sighs> back. Oh, Just some better. minor technical difficulties. Uh, yeah, and for the sorry people that are. That. Yep, and for the people that are watching my video, I apologize for that being blazingly loud. Um, as soon as we started, I mean, it wasn't so bad on the roads, but once we started walking in that heavy brush, it was just like, <laughs> and I was getting deafened. So uh, we we can fix the volume in post. True, true. Yeah, but but my my favorite game, um, looking at E3, out of all of them, was Watchdog. Um, I loved L.A. Noir, and like, you know, just that that feel of game of you're like a protagonist against the world like you know I mean he he was shooting up all those people and then all of a sudden the police were after him you know and I mean it's just like I feel like that a heroine you know it's just awesome not heroin is awesome but a heroine is awesome <laughs> but the character's male so it's a hero true true but I like saying heroin well <laughs> We all know where Adam's mind is. Yep, yep, in the gutter where it should be. Well, um, that anyway, <laughs> I, I'm really just waiting for more plot details, because it seems like, at least to me, that without a good story to back it up, the gameplay will be lacking. It looks to me like it's going to be a very narrative-heavy driven game. And it looks mm -hmm. like it's going to have a very similar feel to a uh, Deus Ex, kind of that uh, oh, yeah. shadows, yeah. conspiracies with corporations type thing. Yeah. Oh, and we cannot forget, we almost did forget, I almost forgot, Assassin's Creed, the new one, where you yeah, play as a Native American. I'm going to have to say that doesn't really count since it wasn't announced at E3. But True. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they had, like, a one little, like, a, a side booth about it, so, Here's you know. House. I a see house. it. Is that a zombie? Ooh, we got, I see two walkers and a monkey and a grandpa. And a town. Trying to find his glasses. I think I'm I know where to, we are. Where? I want to say that we may be in the Three Valleys area. I could be wrong, though. Okay. Let's go check out this little house barn thingamajig. Alrighty. Oh yeah, and we're still not using a map and still not using a compass, even though we have one. Just because we feel like we're still... I mean, we've had these characters for a day, we really shouldn't have that stuff yet. Oh my god, don't watch this, guys. Don't watch it. I'm rolling in first person. I apologize. Uh, but the other thing that really impressed me from E3 was the uh, Unreal Engine 4 show-off, especially the uh, technical walkthrough. It's amazing that that whole thing was running, uh, the first part of that was running in editor, on a computer running a single NVIDIA G uh, 680 GTX card. I saw that and I was like, what? Give me, yeah. give me, give me. <laughs> I know. It looks gorgeous. And it looks like you can really do some powerful stuff in there with the, the lighting effects and the particles. Like and when, the uh, new Kismet looks so much nicer to use than the current Kismet. Do you want to explain Kismet to the, to the viewers? Right. Um, for the non-developers. <laughs> yeah, um, Kismet is a visual scripting language for uh, the Unreal Engine. What it consists of is a series of kind of like nodes that you can plug other nodes into that cause things to happen. It um, allows you to create dynamic events within the game without having to touch um, actual code code, which is nice. I see some bullets for you, Adam. Oh, for the church bell, which I was told not to use, but I still like it because it's loud and makes makes my life more fun. And nothing else exciting. Oh my god, bait. 
I already stole it. You, One, you two, son three, of a bit. four, five, six. I, I have. <laughs> Give me the I have, beans. I have six cans of beans now. Give me the beans. They're in my backpack. You can take one if you need it. Give me the. I, I'm just kidding. Let's keep moving. There's pasta over here too. Mmm, pasta. a little bit about the map. So, um, there was one comment um, from Edwin and a whole bunch of numbers on the first video, and um, he was pretty much asking us what we thought of the world map. And I think it's really well done. They did a really good job of uh, taking that real-world map data and converting it into an environment that is fun to play. Um, what do you think, Adam? Yeah, I agree. I mean, the fact that uh, it's using realistic data, you know, real-world data to create a game map, I think that's a great concept. Because, uh, you know, it gives it like a realism almost, because you, you can have artists all day imagining what a tree line would look like. You know, how a hill would interact with the, um, with the other... I just got stood up. That was bad. Yes, you did. Look at all the zombies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten zombies. Ay ay ay, I'm going up this hill. Um, yeah, it, I mean, because like when you look at like real geography, the way that the mountains and valleys interact with each other, with each other, are you know, I mean, it's it's magical almost. I'm an outdoor kind of person, and so when you see like a a game developer like imagine what they think how a mountain would interact with a valley and a river and... Oh, I just got kicked, Alex. Same. Well, I think... Um, that will be this episode. We will pick up on the rest of that um, thread of conversation in the next episode. Mm -hmm. uh, also, just so you guys know what our res recording schedule is, uh, because we both are extremely busy people. We are having to record these in two episode chunks. Right. So, while we may not address um, any questions or topics you have for us in the next episode, we will cover them in the following episode. Right. As always, leave any questions, comments below in the comments. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Alex. Yeah. And I'm Adam. It's Peace. been a pleasure serving you guys. Thank you. Bye.